Hello and welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we will learn how to reset default CSS and we will learn about the display property. So without wasting time, let's get started. So I have already opened VS Code and here in the Explorer, you can see I have created a new folder called as chapter 4 and inside chapter 4, I have created two files index.html, which is this one. And then we have a style.css, which is this one. All right. So let me close the Explorer. Now here in index.html, I'm going to link the R CSS file quickly. So I'll just have a shortcut link colon and then write CSS and hit enter and the file automatically gets linked. Now let me save it and nothing will happen because we have no predefined styles. Now I'm going to talk about one thing here before we talk about the CSS display. All right. And that is if we open developer tools and how do we open? We either right click and then click on inspect or we just press control shift I on Google Chrome and the developer tools pop up for us. Now one thing to note here is since we have no styles defined by default, some styles are already here. If we click here and we hover over the element, as you can see, it already has some, as you can see, font size is there. It already has some height and width, the 751.2 uh, and 37.6, right? So if you look at the box, as you can see, some height and width is already given. And as you can see, the body already has some predefined styling that is already there, the margin 8 pixel. So we don't want, we just want to get rid of this. So the basic thing here is that we are going to target our entire HTML document using the star that we have talked about in the real videos. And here we can simply write the margin set to zero and save it. And as you can see, we have no gaps now here. Absolutely amazing, right? Now for uh, purposes that all our elements are displayed properly, the padding should be always set to zero at first. And also, as I told you in the last video, the box sizing preferred is broader box. So from, from now on, we will be using for all our CSS and HTML videos, we will be using the box sizing border box. So uh, it is a good, uh, it is generally a good rule, uh, basically to have all of your style sheets filled with these three properties for your entire HTML document. Now let's talk about the CSS display property. I have written an H1 tag here that says CSS display, right? Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write something or I have already a heading element here, right? Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a paragraph element or not maybe a paragraph but a link element or a, a tag that is called that has some link let's say our very own tutorials okay i cannot remember the spelling of my own <laughs> that's crazy and let's say click what's wrong with my typing click here if you save it as you can see we have a we have a heading h1 and we have a link right first of all let's just have some separation between them so what i'm going to do is for our h1 i'm going to give it a margin bottom of 20 pixels so that they are separated actually it should be more let's say 100 pixels and as you can see now one thing to note here is now right after our h1 if i introduce another heading let's say h2 this is another heading if i save it it appears right here now, why this appears? It's because of the margin. Let me just remove the margin for now. Let me just remove it quickly. And as you can see, just after the first heading, the second heading appears in the next line. Okay. So by this, by this rule, we can say that if after a link, I insert another link, let's say A, or let me just copy paste this one, copy and paste. It should appear right after it on the next line. But when I save it, it appears side by side. Let me zoom it in. As you can see, headings appear on different lines. But why do links appear on same lines? What is the reason? The reason is because of the display properties of CSS. All right, if we right click and inspect, go to our developer tools and we just hover over something like this, okay? Now, if we go here, you will see that for the heading tags, there the user agent style sheet, that is the pre-default style is display block. It says display block. What do we mean that is by display block? By display block means that this H1 tag, if we hover over it, it takes the entire row exactly right up to this end corner it takes the entire row, row, row similarly this heading also takes the entire row but if we hover on any link something like this as you can see for the link the display is not going to be 
block why is that the question is why is the display not a block for the link elements the reason here is because they are not block level elements they are inline elements so basically let me just close this for now we have two types of elements in css or basically in the html and these elements the first one are called as block elements and the second type are called as inline elements so i'll write quickly inline elements as the name says the block elements take up the entire row while as the inline elements only take up the space required for the content for example click here that is what they need and then another link appears all right similarly there are many other types of uh, block level elements for example we have the headings all the headings from 1 to 6 we have the paragraph tag we have the form tag we have the header footer section tags similarly for the inline elements we have tags like links we have span tag we have image tag to be more crispier of what i mean let me save it and let's go to style.css and let's target the heading for the h1 and h2 i can target multiple headings separated by a comma see in CSS. Now just give them some border to visualize. One pixel solid red. If I save it, as you can see, the border spans all the way across the end, right? Because they are block level elements. That is the thing. Now, if we give the same border to our link, border one pixel solid, let's say blue. If I save it, as you can see, let me zoom in. As you can see, the border is only up to the content here because these are inline elements. They don't take up the entire row, okay? So inline elements only take the necessary content, all right? While as the block elements take up that entire line or that entire row. Now, we can also change this property. By default, the headings have what? The headings have what we call as display property of block this is by default nothing will happen but we can change this we can set the display to inline and it will change as you can see they became inline elements only taking up the space required for their content right similarly if the link the link is a uh, display by default it is of what it is inline so nothing will happen but if i change it to block it will take up the entire row as you can see the links now take up the entire row so the headings and links have interchanged their properties let's say all right so we can also manipulate them using the display property now there are many other types of uh, display property what are these for example let's go back to default let me just delete these and save it as you can see if i want to hide something for example i want to hide these headings or basically i just want to hide my h2 i can write h2 and then i will type display and in the display as you can see it gives us many properties there are many but we will get to them in later videos for now focus on block that we already did in line we did another one is none so i'll select none when i save this display none the h2 heading this is another heading will be gone if i save it as you can see that heading is gone that is out of our html document okay so we can also use this one for the link i will write something called as a display and i will set it to none and save and the links are gone okay so okay let's bring back the links all right now there is a property that often people are confused with there are two types of properties so i'm going to just remove for now and get back my heading there are two types of properties i'm going to write them here the first one is something called as display none that we already did for example if i again write h2 and i say display none and save it h2 is gone it is out of the flow of our document we don't have h2 now all right but if we don't write this h2 is back another property is visibility if i write visibility and i set it to hidden watch this when i set it to hidden if i save it as you can see the h2 is hidden but its place is still taken as you can see this place has some gap this means this is the gap of h2 this is basically the content where h2 should be but since we have used the visibility hidden it has just uh, hide this h2 for us but it is still there in the html document 
All right, so that's the difference. If we don't use visibility hidden, but we use display none, that it simply gets deleted from our HTML. Think of it like this. But if we don't use display none, and instead we use visibility hidden, it will just hide it from the user, but the h2 tag having that text will be there in the HTML document. So that's one thing. Now there are many more display properties that we have to talk about, especially we have the Flexbox and then we also have the grid system, which we will talk about in the later coming videos. That will be it for this display property. That will be enough for this video. In the next video, we will learn about the CSS positioning property. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and I will see you in the next video.